Yo guys, it's Luke, and this is my desk setup 2.0. So if you guys remember my last desk setup video centered around a pre-built Hemnes desk from Ikea. Now while I really enjoyed using that particular setup for the past few years, it was time for a change. I decided to start from scratch so to speak and after a ton of research, I settled on the popular Alex drawer and Ikea desk combination. This particular desktop is actually the Carl B walnut countertop from Ikea. I'd seen it in person before and I just fell in love with the rich warm color and the butcher block pattern. The countertop comes in two sizes, six and eight feet, but because of the larger size of this room, I felt that the eight foot option would be better suited for me. Now, something worth considering is that if you plan on picking up the eight foot length, you're going to want a support leg to prevent sagging in the middle. Ikea does offer some support legs, which I'll put in the description below, but I ended up going with a custom cut iron pipe and fitting that I picked up from my local hardware store. For the drawers, like I mentioned, these are the ever popular Alex drawers. These particular ones are the dark black brown variant, which I chose to match the overall aesthetic of the setup, but they do come in several other additional colors if you want to go that route. What I really like about these drawers is the sheer amount of storage space that you get. It's far better than most pre-built offerings and really allows you to customize the way you organize your desk. Now, as you can see, I also added some drawer liners to prevent things from moving around each time I opened and closed them. Lastly, I picked up these black two inch furniture risers and drilled them directly into the drawers to add some space. I picked this particular mod up from Random Frank P who made a very similar desk setup build a few years ago and I think it looks really good. Now, this whole setup cost me a whopping $500, which is quite expensive for an IKEA build. Keep in mind that $100 of that was due to shipping, but IKEA recently raised the price on both the Alex drawer and the Carlby countertop due to their popularity. If you want to build a similar, cheaper setup, IKEA has several options, which I'll link down below. Both the Alex drawers and the Carlby countertop frequently go out of stock, and I had to wait over five months for both of them to come back in. From there, let's talk about the monitor. This is the BenQ EX2780Q that BenQ sent out to me last year. I filmed a review on its older brother, the EW2780, and compared to that, this monitor is worlds better. It's an IPS 144Hz 1440p panel, which simply looks amazing. I actually had a review planned for the display way back in mid-2020, but due to some scheduling conflicts, I was never able to get it out. That said, this is my current favorite display for gaming. It's both G-Sync and AMD FreeSync compatible, meaning that you won't have any screen tearing with a compatible GPU. The display is also fairly color accurate, hitting 100% of the sRGB range, 90% of the Adobe RGB range, and 95% of the P3 color gamut as well. As such, I feel fairly confident editing photos or videos on this panel. Unfortunately though, this display doesn't get that bright, hitting a peak brightness of about 400 nits, which means HDR isn't that great. Still, at $299 down from the $450 it retailed for, this monitor packs some serious quality. Again, big shout out to BenQ for sending this over. Now, by now you might have noticed several walnut wood items and these are all thanks to the folks over at Grovemade. A while back, Grovemade reached out to me and offered to send some of their high quality products over to add to the desk setup. And it just so happened that this walnut color that they use almost identically matches the color of the Carlby countertop from Ikea. And I gotta admit, the craftsmanship of these products are top tier. For this setup, I chose their MagSafe charging stand, headphone stand, walnut mouse pad, MacBook slash laptop stand, and my favorite of them all, this incredibly high quality pen and walnut wood holder. I'm serious when I say that this is the nicest and smoothest writing experience that I've ever had using a pen. Grobemade also sent over this really nice dark blue notepad that I like a lot. Again, I can't say this enough, these are some of the most premium products I've ever used and I recommend you checking them out. In addition to the Grobemade products, I also picked up a gray felt desk pad from Amazon that for me really completes the setup. However, sometimes I like to switch things up and for that I have these really high quality leather and felt desk pads from a company called OrbitKey. Each pad comes with a magnetic cable manager and the top lifts up for easy storage of frequently used documents. It comes in multiple sizes, but I find the medium to be perfect for this particular desktop. From there, let's talk audio. These are the exact same speakers from my last desk setup, except this time around, I opted for the black variant to match the overall aesthetic. The iLoud macro monitors are studio monitors, which means the response rate is really flat, giving a true to source sound for mixing. Right now, I've got them paired with the SHITT Hell Gaming DAC that Gameski, a fellow creator, sent over. And this setup takes these already great monitors to the next level. 
The clarity in the high end and in the mids and the deep resonating bass just makes this home office audio setup feel like you're in a professional studio environment. Also, these speakers are still fairly affordable coming in at around $300 for the pair and another $100 for the DAC. So all in all, for around $400, this setup takes any home office up a notch and then some. Lastly, for the headphones, I've been using the Mackie MC450 open back reference monitors, and these are every bit as good as the iLouds. In fact, I'm mixing the audio for this video on these headphones right now. Again, I've got to give a big thanks and shout out to Gameski for sending these and the deck my way. If you haven't already, make sure to check out his channel where he covers tons of audio gear. I can't recommend him enough. All right, now probably my favorite thing about this particular desk setup is the lighting. This is the Govi Glide. It's an RGB LED tube that is much more affordable alternative to the Lifix Beam. There are a ton of different lighting effects and presets to choose from in the Govi app, and I'd be remiss to say if I didn't mention that this light is crazy bright. Typically, I have it set to around 30% brightness, which I find to be plenty adequate, but if you want, you can easily crank this and it almost lights up the entire setup altogether. Also, the Glide is Google Home and Alexa compatible, which makes pairing the entire setup to turn on at the same time really straightforward. On the back of the desk, there's another Govi RGB IC LED strip, and the reason I chose this LED strip over other versions is that this one has an addressable RGB LEDs built in, which means you can change the individual LEDs to have different colors, effectively creating cool animations and gradients instead of changing only one color at a time. This LED strip also has the same Wi-Fi and smart home connectivity that the Glide does. And behind the monitor, I also have an older LED strip that I picked up from Yeelight a few years ago. Unfortunately, this is the older RGB version, which means it's not addressable, and it seems to be dying out, so I'll probably end up replacing this one sometime very soon. Lastly for lighting, I picked up this white Tomans desk lamp, and I replaced the stock white bulb with an Edison LED filament bulb that I picked up from Target. Overall, I think this really ties well into my white NZXT case, but I do wish the wood color was a darker walnut wood, and I may end up staining this in the future by myself. Now, you might be wondering what my monitor arm camera setup is here. Well, back when the pandemic was in full swing, I wanted to get a streaming setup started, and this is what I settled on. You might have seen me post this on Twitter, but this is a Vivo monitor arm that I adapted a baby tripod and ball head for a pretty low profile look. I got this idea from Caleb Pike who made a ton of videos featuring different recording setups, so definitely check him out. The camera I'm using is actually my first video camera, the Panasonic G7, and it's paired with an Avermedia capture card for zoom and streaming. The light here is also my first LED light, and this is the newer 170 LED, and I've adapted a small softbox to it. It's not the softest lighting in the world, but for my use case, it gets the job done. Now, in the future, I might end up changing the streaming setup a bit. I'm toying with the idea of moving the monitor arm to the other side and swapping this setup for a standalone camera mount. So if that's a video you wanna see, be sure to let me know down below. For the mic, I'm using the same mic that I've been using for the past four years, which is the Zoom H2 paired with the Rode PSA1 boom arm. I made a full video covering this mic way back in 2018, but it's still holding up just fine and the sound quality still impresses me to this day. Here's a quick example of the streaming quality that this setup yields. All right, so here's just an audio visual example of the kind of quality that you can expect from a setup like this. Now I do have the microphone boom just right out of the frame and you could bring it closer to your mouth if you wanted better audio quality, but I find that for my purposes being mainly zoom and streaming that this setup works just fine. So yeah, here's just a quick example of the audio and visual quality that you can expect from a setup like this. Moving on, let's talk peripherals. In mid of 2020, a company by the name of Equinix, Equinix, I'm not entirely sure how to say it, they sent me out a board called the L80 Mechanical Keyboard, and it's got a lot of features that I really enjoy. First off, this board has three methods of connectivity, Bluetooth, 2.4 gigahertz wireless, or wired, of course. I'll be honest, both the Bluetooth and wireless connectivity are pretty solid, but I actually prefer to leave this keyboard plugged in most of the time as I've had some weird issues with battery life, but I think that might be my power source more than anything else. From there, this keyboard features fully hot swappable switches, and right now I've got a combination of Gatoron Brown and red switches currently installed. The board also has RGB backlighting, but unfortunately there's no companion software to control the various lighting effects, and I find that my particular unit is not very bright. Equinix has said they're planning on releasing software for in the future, but there's no current timeline on that. So if RGB lighting matters to you, this might not be the best option. That said, for its versatility, looks, and price coming in at around $170, it's a pretty decent keyboard. My favorite thing about it is probably the unique design and the sound.
The board also features some adjustable feet and you can dial in your preferred height. And the board also supports full end key rollover so you get precise inputs while gaming. Connected to the keyboard is a coiled cable from the folks over at Matrix Keyboards that's held up for the better part of two years now. Now, back when my desk setup was mainly white themed, I went on a long hunt for the best wireless white mouse, and I finally settled on the Logitech G305 that I've been using for several years now. I'll be honest, this mouse is great. Not only does it look good, but it's also fairly light and works as a great hybrid mouse for both gaming and general desktop use. The only thing I wish was better was the scroll wheel. It's not bad by any means, but I find it to be a little cheap feeling compared to the rest of the mouse. That said, for around $50, it's a steal. All right, we're almost done, but there are just a few more things I want to feature. First is this really cool pixel art Bluetooth speaker from Devoom. I've made a few videos on their products in the past, and this one is probably my favorite of them all. This is the Devoom Tivoom Max, and what I really like about this particular version is the large screen size and the sound quality. Honestly, for what it does, the sound quality doesn't feel like an afterthought. That's probably due to the port for the sub on the back, but again, I'm really impressed with this device. Also, the design and aesthetic are top notch and you can put up retro designs and pixel art, which is hella cool. Okay, and lastly, this is my chair. So for the longest time, I've been using an Ikea bamboo kitchen table chair. I know, I know, it was not very comfortable, but it matched my setup really well. A few months back, my company was recycling an office chair and I took it home. To my surprise, this is actually a Steelcase Leap version one. And let me tell you, it's really comfortable. The chair features several adjustable levers, letting you really dial in your preferred comfort. It's got lower back support, adjustable seat depth, adjustable arms, and much, much more. The fabric it's made of also stays fairly cool. However, the only thing I wish was better about this version was the seat cushion. It's pretty comfortable, but after a few hours, it can get a little fatiguing. I might end up swapping out the seat cushion for something different in the future, but for now, it gets the job done. Also, the color was black, so it just so happened to match the desk setup theme, which was great. And that pretty much does it. Yes, I know it's been quite a while since I've uploaded here, but 2021 was an interesting year for me personally, to say the least. But I'm hoping to get some more content out for you all very soon. Lastly, if you made it this far, make sure to comment the word Game Boy down below and let me know what your favorite aspect about the setup was. Anyways, that's going to wrap it up. This is Luke, and I'll catch you guys later. Peace.